This is the fifth session of Second Kings today before the sermon next spring. Our Heavenly Father, we are going to study your word. May you give us wisdom so we can understand your message and also may you help us to humble ourselves so we can we will humble uh, uh, we will willing to we will be willing to follow in your will. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Elisa was an important and famous prophet in the Old Testament. Today's scripture, Second Kings, chapter thirteen, verse fourteen to twenty-five, is the record of just and be, uh, just before and after his death. Let us study together to see what it is teaching and reminding us. There are two parts in this passage. The first part is the prophecy of Eliza and its fulfillment. Another part was inserted in the first part, and it was about a miracle after Eliza's death. Now, let us look into the first part, Second Kings chapter thirteen, verse fourteen to nineteen, and verse twenty-two to twenty-five. Verse 14 to 19 and verse 22 to 25. Now Eliza had been suffering from the illness from which he died. Jehoaz, king of Israel, went down to see him and wept over him. My father, my father, he cried, the chariots and horsemen of Israel. Eliza said, Get a bow and some arrows. And he did so. Take the bow in your hands, he said to the king of Israel. When he had taken it, Eliza put his hands and the king's hands, on the king's hands. Open the east window, he said, and he opened it. Should, Eliza said, and he saw it. The lost arrow of it, victory, the arrow of victory over Rome. Eliza declared, You will completely destroy the Aramians' effect. Then, he said, Take the arrows, and the king took them. Eliza told him, strike the ground. He struck it three times and stopped. The man of God was angry with him and said, You should have struck three, the ground five or six times. Then you would have defeated Aram and completely destroyed it. But now you will defeat it only three times. Verse 22. Also, king of Aram oppressed Israel throughout the reign of Jehoahaz. But the Lord was gracious to them and had compassion and so concern for them because of his covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. To this day, he has been unwilling to destroy them and banish them for, from his presence. Also, king of Aram died, and Ben Hadar, his son, succeeded him as king. Then, Jehoahaz, Jehoahaz, son of Jehoahaz, recaptured from Behada, son of Hazel, because he had taken in battle from his father Jehoahaz. Three times Jehoahaz defeated him, and so he recovered the Israelites. This is the first key point. The faithfulness of God will not be changed by the unfaithfulness of man. At the beginning of the passage, verse 14, verse 14, as I have been suffering from the, the illness from, uh, from he, he died, Jehoahaz, king of Israel, went down to see him and read over him, My father, my father, he cried, the chariots and horsemen of Israel. The king of Israel, Jehoshua, heard Eliza was about to die, so he went to risk Eliza and said, My father, my father, the chariots and horsemen of Israel. This sentence was the same as what Eliza said in chapter 2, verse 12, when Eliza saw Elijah was taken up to heaven. Eliza called Elijah as my father because of his respect to him. And the chariots and horsemen of Israel sold 
Eliza thought that Elijah was the power of protecting Israel. King Jehoash said the same words. It seems he respected Elijah very much. However, it was not true. According to the record of Second King, before chapter 13, the last record of Elijah helped Israel to beat the Ammonites is chapter 8. And before the incident of chapter 13, there is no record of Jehoaz with Eliza and sought help from Eliza. Actually, King Jehoaz did not believe Eliza could help him. He risked Eliza just because of the high reputation of Eliza. And now he was about to die. So he just followed the public opinion to risk him. However, Eliza ignored Jehoah's motivation. He served the Lord and proclaimed for the Lord faithfully. He asked the king to take the boy and then he put his hands on king's hands and asked the king to suit. It symbolized God will fight with Israel. Eliza also prophesied Israel would defeat Aram and destroy the Aram army at Ephraim. Ephraim belonged to Israel in the past, and it was at the east of the Jordan River, and also the only way from Israel to Aram. First King chapter 12, uh, 20, verse 26. The list sprang Behadam mustard, the Aramian, and went up to Ephraim to fight against Israel. Israel would occupy Ephraim again. That means Aram would not be able to threaten Israel for a period of time. Then Second King chapter 13, verse 18 to 19. Records Eliza asked the king to take the arrows and strike the ground. Then the king struck three times and stopped. He was so angry. They did not mention the number of the time that the king should strike. So, what was the wrong with the king? In fact, Eliza was angry because the king did not believe. As mentioned before, the king did not come to risk Eliza by his true heart. And Eliza has said the arrow was the arrow of victory over a In verse 17, therefore striking the ground with the arrow was something related to defeat a If the king had questions about it, after striking three times, he could ask Eliza whether it was enough or not. However, verse 18 records he stopped. Stopped is the translation of NIV. In the original text, it had the meaning of stood, the past tense of stand. He struck the ground, he should bend down, and then he stood. It means he had finished the complete action. He and he did not ask, also will not do it again. In fact, the king did not believe and just did it three times skipping. King Joas did not believe the prophecy of Eliza. However, the Lord did not stop his work. Verse 24 to 25. Verse 24 to 25. As the king of Awam died, and Behad, Behad, his son, succeeded him as king. Then Jehoaz, son of Jehoahaz, recaptured from Behad, son of Hazel, the times he had taken in battle from his father Jehoahaz. Three times Jehoaz defeated him, and so he recovered the Israelite towns. Later, Israel defeated Awam three times, and the prophecy of Elijah was fulfilled. 
King Jehoaz did not have intention to seek help from God, and he also did not believe the prophecy of the court. <clears throat> so, why did the Lord help him to defeat a warm army? We can find the answer in verse 22 to 25. Verse 22 to 25. As the king of Aram oppressed Israel throughout the reign of Jehoahaz, but the Lord was gracious to them and had compassion to show the concern for them because of his covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. To this day, he has been unwilling to destroy them and banish them from his presence. In fact, the Lord helped King Jehoahaz to defeat Aram army because of his covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. In the time of Genesis, the Lord had promised to give this land to their descendants, Israelites. Therefore, the Lord did not let Aram to win over Israel completely. In this incident, whether King Jehoash believed in God's prophecy or not, it did not affect God's plan of protecting Israel because God is faithful and will not violate his promises. God has a plan to every one of us. When we follow his wills and walk in his way, it will not be smooth always and we will meet difficulties. Sometimes it may be because we did not do well. Then we should be alert and repent. And sometimes, perhaps, because of some factors, even attacks from other people, we cannot see the way clearly. And today's scripture reminds us that when God wanted to protect Israel, although Jehovah not believe, it did not affect the plan of God. May we do not focus on man's work but keep our eyes on the faithfulness of God and believe God's promises must be fulfilled. Even though the world is not here, we still have confidence to walk in His way. We have skipped verse 20 to 21. There is a question. Verse 14 to 19 and 22 to 25 is the complete record of the incident. So, why did the author or editor insert the other incidents in verse 20 to 21? In the aspect of history, it is strange indeed. However, Bible is not a common history book. The author or editors of 2 Kings and, and 2 Kings wanted to deliver some theological messages and tell God's works to us full recording rec uh, history. Therefore, the whole passage of today's scripture has one main theme, and verse 20 to 21 is not digressive. It's the core message. Just like sandwiches, the middle part is more important than the back. Let's look into verse 20 to 21 very carefully. Verse 20 to 21. Elijah died and was buried. Now, Boba Raiders used to enter the country every spring. Once, while some Israelites were burying a man, suddenly they saw a band of raiders. So they threw the man's body into Eliza's tomb. When the body touched Eliza's bones, the man came to life and stood up on his feet. This is the second key point. The power of God will not be affected by the absence of man. The incident is described very clearly. After Elisa's death, some people wanted to bury the other man just near Elisa's tomb. At that moment, mobile raiders came and attacked this place. So these people wanted to run away and they just threw the dead body into Eliza's tomb. At that time, people would put that body into caves, not under the ground. 
So it was very simple and did not waste much time. When this dead man touched Eliza's bone, he raised up again. It seemed that Eliza was powerful indeed. He could perform the miracle even he had passed away. But what is the relationship between these two verses and the context? If they are under the same main theme, what is it? Please pay attention. This passage is not describing Alicia uh, was very powerful, but he did not have any power. Verse 40 mentions, when the King Jehoahaz met Elisa, he said, the chariots and horsemen of Israel. It means Elisa was the protection of Israel. Although King Jehoahaz did not believe it really, for the general public at that time, Elisa was the symbol, was the icon. Sometimes, People may think the ones who protest them are some great people, just like Elisa. When Elijah was taken up to heaven, he also said this word. He thought Elijah was the one who could protest them. However, the one who protects us is not a man. Verse 21 describes the dead man touched Eliza's bones and then he raised up again. At that time, Eliza's body had been corrupted. There were the bones only. Eliza had been dead for a long time. He was dead completely. Therefore, the man raised up again, not because of the power of Eliza. It was the work of the law. From this, in verse 25, Israel defeated Awamami three times, also not because of Eliza, but the power of the law. Many people thought Eliza was the icon of their faith, and they believed Eliza was the protection of Israel. However, Today's scripture reminds us that the one who is able to keep and save us is the only God. From this, we may have some reflections from two aspects. Firstly, do we have some icons of our faith? When I was young, I respect some of my Sunday school teachers or some pastors, and I want wanted to serve the Lord like them. When I had grown up, I realized they also have weakness. Even some of them left the church. I was quite confused. But what is the teaching from the Bible? First Corinthians chapter 3, verse 11. For no one can lay any foundation other than the one already laid, which is Jesus Christ. If we have some mentors to guide us, it is good. But Jesus Christ is our only foundation of our faith, and He is the only God and only Savior. Secondly, if we teach in the church or teach the children in our families, are we the icon of other people or the children? I'm not exhorting you that but don't serve in the church, also not giving the pressure to parents. When I was a 120, a mother of a teenager came and talked to me and said, my son thinks you are his hero, so don't fall down. Indeed, we should try our best to avoid temptation. However, everyone will live on some day just like Eliza. Therefore, besides being alert always, there is something also very important. Colossians chapter 1, verse 28. He is the one we proclaim, admonishing and teaching everyone with all wisdom, 
so that we may present everyone fully but sure in Christ. Perhaps when we teach, we may become the icon of the others, but it is not the final destination. We should not stop. We have to admonish and teach them until they are mature in Christ, until they realize Jesus Christ is their only foundation and rely on him. Then their lives will be secure because God is faithful. His promises and protection will not be changed by other people or matters. Dear brothers and sisters, may the Lord strengthen us so that we realize Jesus Christ is the only foundation of our faith. And may the Lord also give us wisdom so we will know how to present the others mature in Christ and guide them to rely on God. Let's pray. Our Lord Jesus Christ, may you strengthen our faith so we will rely on you always. Also give us wisdom so we will know how to guide and teach the others so that all of us will realize that you are the only God and only Savior. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.